Welcome back to another learning series with Mr. Knight. Today's topic is on the respiratory system. The respiratory system is responsible for breathing and gaseous exchange. Let's look at the parts or the structures of the respiratory system. We have the nostril, otherwise called the nose. We have the nasal cavity. We have the pharynx, which is also called the throat. We have the larynx, which is also called the voice box. We have the trachea. And the trachea is made up of rings of cartilage. These cartilage will prevent the trachea from collapsing while you're swallowing food. So while food is passing through the esophagus behind the trachea, the trachea will maintain, will maintain its shape. We also have what they call the bronchus. And the plural form, which means both of them will be bronchi. At the end of the bronchus, we have bronchiole. Plural form will be bronchioles. We have the lungs. and the end of the bronchiole, we will have the alveolus. And the plural form for, for alveolus will be alveoli. Now, let's look at what is happening to air as we breathe in. Now, in the nasal cavity, we have mucus and cilia. Air, which is a mixture of gases, also contains dust particles and foreign objects. The mucus will trap these dust particles and other objects, and, and the cilia will sweep them towards the nostril. So as air enters the nasal cavity, air is being cleaned. Now, inside the nasal cavity, we have what they call conchae. One of them is known as a concha. The conchae, they are protruding bones within the nasal cavity. The purpose for the conchae, they help to increase the surface area of the nasal cavity. They also help to spread air, air molecules or gaseous molecules and also to slow down their movement so they can become warm. So as air enters the nasal cavity, air is becoming warmer now it's important to note that while we are inhaling and exhaling as i mentioned that air is a mixture of gases however when you inhale you take in more oxygen compared to what you are releasing also you take in you release more carbon dioxide than what you are taking in very important to note during inhalation, there are a number of things that are happening. One, the diaphragm flattens. And the diaphragm flattens because the muscles of the diaphragm, they contract. The diaphragm also moves down, downwards. The intercostal muscles, they will contract. The rib cage will move upwards and also outwards and, uh, and the purpose of this is to increase the thoracic volume or capacity so the thoracic volume will increase because you take in more gas or air now the thoracic pressure is also decrease during exhalation the diaphragm rises and the, re and the reason for this is because the muscles, they relax. The diaphragm moves upwards, forming a dome shape. So you can notice how it is different from the first diagram. It's a dome shape. And the diaphragm will push, will push against the lungs. The intercostal muscles, they will relax. The rib cage will move downwards and inwards squeezing against the lungs and because of that now the thoracic capacity or the volume will decrease the thoracic pressure will also increase and this will cause air to force out of the lungs out into the atmosphere 
Now let's zoom in to an alveolus. An alveolus, which is a which, which are alveolus, is found at the end of the bronchiole. And let's look at the, the structures of the alveolus. So at the end of the bronchiole, we have the alveolus. The walls of the alveolus contain some cells which are called epithelial cells. In fact, you can call the wall of the alveolus the epithelium. Surrounding the alveolus, we have capillaries. The end of the capillary that taking blood towards the, the lungs or the alveolus is called the atriole. And the atriole is connected to the pulmonary artery, which is taking deoxygenated blood inside of the lungs. And the other end is known as the venule, which is connected to the pulmonary vein that is taking oxygenated blood towards the heart. And inside of the capillary, the main cells we want to focus on here is the red blood cells because they will be, the, they will be responsible to absorb the oxygen because of the presence of hemoglobin within these cells. Now, gaseous exchange is the process by which one gas replaces another gas. So inside the alveolus, we have oxygen entering. If you notice the flow of oxygen, it goes in. And then it eventually diffuses across the walls of the alveolus into the capillary. At the other end, you have carbon dioxide diffusing out, in, out of the capillary into the alveolus and then diffuses out through the nasal cavity. So you can notice the flow of the gases, oxygen going in, carbon dioxide coming out. Now the features of the alveolus. So these features are responsible to ensure that the alveolus will work effectively in carrying out gaseous exchange. So one, the walls, they are thin. The alveolus is moist, and that is because of mucus. It has a large surface area. It is covered with a lot of capillaries. Now, the effect of smoke on the alveolus is that if you smoke over a period of time, the smoke can be trapped inside of the alveolus and form a tar-like structure because it mixes with the mucus and the mucus eventually can become dry. So the effects are what they call emphysemia. And emphysemia is when the alveolus loses it, its elastic nature. It becomes weakened and sometimes collapse. There is a reducing surface air because of the smoke built up. There is a reduced diffusion because the gas will be difficult to pass through the walls because of the tar and you can notice how the gas are moving. They have a difficult time in passing through from the alveolus into the blood capillary and even from the blood capillary into the alveolus. So there could be a built up of carbon dioxide in the blood and there will be a deprivation of oxygen in the blood. And because of this, you have a shortness. You can have a shortness of breath. And there's a built up of tar and mucus because once the tar is forming, your, your body will respond to that and form excess mucus. The excess mucus could also reduce the flow of gases. All right. So, folks, at this point, we're at the end of the lesson. I hope you have learned something. To continue learning, please hit the subscribe button so you can get early notification. See you in the next lesson.